Hello, welcome to your Astro Talk. I'm Simone with Ripples in the Matrix. Maloney with Habitual Sages is about to be in here, and we are going to get going and talk all about Aquarius season, which starts tomorrow, and the Aquarius new moon, which is happening the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow, I think. I think. Hey! Yay! You're here. I These unannounced ones are just, it is what it is. We're just unannouncing and we're just flowing and whoever can come on can come on. And that's it. And honestly, I just kind of forgot. I think we both did. <laughs> I'm so excited. We are validating our reality. That is what's happening right now. Our we are validating our reality. And I yes, and um, I did put it up in Mighty Networks. So if you're part of oh, yeah. Mighty Networks, you know, it would, it, you could have gotten a calendar there's there's benefits there's benefits to community <laughs> yay happy happy birthday the very end of our capricorn right here oh happy birthday to the cap we love little caps oh my god we love capricorns you know and i just had this epiphany i just had this epiphany capricorn is sandwiched between um it is sandwiched between two expanders to it to what to exhibitors expand oh okay hey i did not hear that. i was like wait a minute what yes uh such yes and, and aquarius mm -hmm. two totally different types of but look this is obviously the aquarius one that we're talking about because i've got my shaking phone things are just but i mean it and I'm like totally vibing of the happening at like, like almost two degrees or like one degree something. Um, two degrees sun. So it's trining my sun. <laughs> and when I found that, when I re looked at it, I'm like, oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> We're just great. The void that I've been feeling, this is, I just got on my stories and I talked about it. Like it's just been so, it's been heavy it's been dense it's been like it's this consolidation of the fucking final day of capricorn season yep. hi yeah, yeah this is real like what did you expect and yeah and it's interesting because like going from capricorn to aquarius they're both <laughs> traditional ruler is saturn so it's not like we're out of it, but it's it's so interesting how Saturn really performs differently in each sign. And but you're still dealing with Saturn. So it is like, okay, so I gave you like this whole moment to get your shit ready. So is your shit ready? No. Because it's not. It's not. And Saturn's over here like. I, well, I don't know what to tell you what the fuck to do because I gave you, I gave, gave you for the fucking days. Keep up. Right. Keep the fuck up. Um. <laughs> There's always fun. We are, I mean, everybody I, should, we just all should incorporate more fun into our lives. That goes, because that might be a... <laughs> yeah. Um, so. The fuck? Are we are here to talk um, about Aquarius, Aquarius season and the new moon in Aquarius. Where do you want to start with first? Um, Somebody put it in the chat. First person put it in the chat. We'll talk about it first. Anybody out there? The sun. The sun. All right. Okay, that's where we're gonna go. So let's talk about fairy season. I love it. What do you want to? Where do you want to start, or do you want me? To, oh, oh, oh! The new moon. Got, new moon. Okay, we can do that too. Then I'll give the details. You can start. You can start rolling on the channels. So new moon in Aquarius. 
one degree, 33 minutes, yeah. 1453 central time. So 253 for those that don't military time, um, PM central time. It is trining Jupiter in Aries, albeit not like the, not exact. It is a wider orb, but still trining Jupiter in Aries. Boom. Done. Go. Roll. Okay, tell, me, going, tell me your brain. I am going to pull it up right now. I have a visual. Um, it's, not, it's on the 21st. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Um, so when we look at this, let's pull up the chart. Let's have a little look. A little look-see, look-see. Let's get that visual so that people can understand the trying, the, the, the da 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 So it's, it's, what's beautiful about this, it is going to be felt. The Aquarius season, it's that breath of fresh air energy, um, that is, very much rooted and excite. It's exciting, like, but it, it's fixed air. Mm -hmm. It's that stagnant, stale air. <laughs> it's the frigid air. I mean, we are, especially in the northern hemisphere, we are in the midst of winter, right? Yeah. So it is frigid air. It's like the like when if anybody's ever lived in colder climates, it's that breath that you blow out and you can see your breath in front of you. The dragon's breath. Yeah. Yes. And here in Vegas right now, like all the, um, like all of a sudden came out from, from the coffee shop and there's just this density of thaw mm -hmm. and it's just laid over and it's just, it, it's, you know, it's doing its thing. You just don't know what it's doing. Yeah. And Aquarius energy, when we move into air signs, it's great for communication, which is wonderful because Mercury is officially direct. Um, Mercury is officially direct. And so with that, we have um, this really beautiful sense of, you know, Mercury, the the communicator, the channeler, the, the messenger, um, mm -hmm. bringing forth this, like, this message moving forward, but in the sun is like, okay, but how bigger how do we bring the collective who are we who is this message now that you had your mental process and you sat with yourself Capricorn season what are you gonna do with it like yeah. what are you bringing forth and the sun and the moon you know now we have this wonderful new um lunar year and we get to start this new season and it's it's the shift of, of the change of the guards and um like i mentioned those i i just need to come back to these two different types of expanders because capricorn energy is the 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 government mm -hmm. and it is serious <clears throat> the serious <laughs> and um the this energy the sense i heard that by the way i don't know what that was i heard it collective yeah it, it, and the Aquarius energy is the collective. It is is the one the ones that the government rules, and it's this like this next checkpoint, this next checkpoint, and there's this new idea that's coming, and especially with Mercury having just gone direct, like you're gonna you're going to have clarity mm -hmm. on something that you just were likely in a fog in. Like the density, you couldn't feel it before. You couldn't quite see. I was talking about it in my stories. You might have been feeling like you've been in the void. I've been talking about this in my classes all week. Just because you're in a void does not mean you are in nothing. Correct. You are in a space of absolute everything. And it could even feel a sense of overwhelm because you don't, you know that every path is before might not have the awareness that every path is before you, but every path is before you and you just don't know which one you're going to clear first and that's gonna be the one you're walking upon. So you have like this, and even in even if you feel like you're in, if you're treading water or if you're in space or something like, you're not in nothing. Yeah. You are in the space of everything. It's just, what are you choosing to look at? 
And I think that this is going to give us that clarity as we go forward of what to actually be looking at, especially having just moved through the conjunction with Pluto. Yes. So before we get to that, because that is a point I have, I have. So Moni and I do not talk before these, like (laughs) what we're going to talk about during this time. So we kind of do like our own little thing and then boom. So I get, and I'm not in Vegas, so I'm not taking her classes. Her, what she just said was one of the visions I got in a, as I was kind of looking into this, but I brought it into that moment before the curtain rises when you're at the symphony or you're on, you're on Broadway, right? You're at, you're at some sort of stage show. Like it's that those, those couple of seconds where they, they flickered the lights to tell you to get the fuck back to your seat. So you've gotten back to your seat, the lights dim and everybody's like, Shh. yeah. And there's this pregnant pause where nothing is ha- happening. It hasn't started yet. This, the curtains haven't risen yet. So you don't know what's behind that curtain. You don't know what's back there, but you know that there's something. You know you're, you're hey, I fucking paid to see The Lion King. There's obviously some shit about ready to go down. Right. Hopefully it's The Lion King and I didn't get the wrong right. goddamn theater. But who knows? Maybe I did. And then I'm going to have a whole different kind of experience. But it is that, like, that's kind of what I, in this moon, I'm really seeing is, like there is a new horizon, but it's taking stage. The, the the actors are getting in place. Your blessings, what you're asking for, your men, they're getting in place right now behind the curtain. The curtain's got to open. That doesn't mean that you're not in the right spot. You're, you just haven't seen, the play hasn't started yet. One who opens the curtain. You're not, not the one who is opening the curtain. You don't know. No. You don't have, you're not the one in control (laughs) that curtain's gonna go up when it's ready to go up end of story the other thing is you were talking that i got a visual of was a tornado so you were kind of talking about like the void and it's common like it's i i would assume it's common knowledge that when you're the center the eye of a tornado or a cyclone or a hurricane the eye of anything that is cyclical at that center point, it, there is no storm. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, it doesn't mean the storm doesn't exist, but when you're in that middle space, yeah. you are in the storm. Just like you were saying, you're in the void. You're yeah. in this, this whole thing. So yeah, it's, that was another visual I got as you were talking. Yeah. And, and we are the void. Mm-hmm. We, you are the one, cre- like you actually, yes, you can't, you're not the one who's in control of looking at the curtain, but you can control how you're feeling about the fact that it's closed. Which is, by the way, all that Aquarius, that's what Aquarius is all about, is understanding that you are the void. You are the liberator. Yeah. You, from within, and it's all about this withinness. You are the one that can make all of these changes. So it's so, you know, prudent that not only do we have this, like we're in getting into Aquarius season, but we have that new moon almost right away. And to get back to your point, so the sun and the moon make their conjunction with Pluto. Are we in it right now? Like, Oh, yesterday was the exact for the sun. Thank you, moon. The moon. Moon, that already happened. Okay. So that's happening. Happening? Happening already happened. It's very close. So just figure we're here. It's going on. And yeah. that to me was like, so first off, the sun will never meet Pluto again in our lifetime in Capricorn. That, it will happen next year. I thought it wasn't going to happen next year. It will happen. That, that's the final time next year. And okay. then for two centuries. Okay. So it, it, regardless, either way, there's a finality of something, right? Okay. Like it, it's something 
like, yes, the sun and the moon are our luminaries, but we're coming into a new moon yeah. where it's darker, it's more intro. And it is that, like, the sun and the moon are kind of like blazing that path forward for Pluto to enter into Aquarius, right? It's almost like this, hey, we're going to set, we are the ones that are going to be pulling up your curtain, Pluto. You're welcome. Here you go. Right? And we have to remember the sun's the consciousness, the moon is our mm -hmm. subconscious, and meeting up with like our darkness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> our darkness it's our darkness that requires for us to fully step into who we are as an individual and as a soul because our soul's growth our soul's journey our soul's um full um embodiment includes the darkness that we also have within us mm -hmm. and it is so important to get with it and integrate it in a healthy way and integrate your shadows and have a sense of what they are and, and really get to know them and and allow them to be seen and while is working through these final degrees of Capricorn really just clearing out the remnant so that you can fully step into your purpose yeah because this isn't just about you it is about the collective and that's what he's working to show us so deeply this is why he's taking so long here is because there's something here like and he goes into aquarius for a split second right. zero, and it's literally just like you're actually literally not ready to enter into the fact that you're entering into service right again it's not about you right it's not about, not about you. you yep it, you are the conduit yep. you are bringing it forward and bringing the forward to the collective but there's still messages that you have to integrate and pluto yep. that integration energy is embodied by pluto with the slow intentional methodical moves that he makes. Yep. Well, on his own, own fucking yep. time. Yep. Went <laughs> literally on his, there is no, I mean, that's, that's kind of also the gift of Pluto. There is no time because yep. it's not everything that you said. And again, depending upon where your belief system in with all this, everything that you said, and then you have to apply that to all of your lifetimes. Mm -hmm all of your lineage, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to go back even further. Yeah. And that is, you know, it's in, that's kind of the gift of Pluto. There is no such thing as time. And that's what he really does teach you is it's like, okay, no, the world does not revolve around you and what you think your concept of time is. Let me show you something. Right. right. Let, me, let me actually educate you on what this means. Right. Right. And and it's it's <clears throat> I feel like, too, with this density is like it, uh, coming back to the seriousness mm -hmm. of uh, of your purpose and allowing for that slowdown mm -hmm. that you can have the endurance to rev and speed up. And what's great is, you know, we do have Mars direct yeah. working process having a beautiful, you know, and that assists with, I love how long Mars is going to take <laughs> to move through Gemini. I know you do. Of course you do. <laughs> but I just am saying that as well with moving into Aquarius season, like yeah. this is further assisting our mental. This is further yes. providing the support the mental endurance we're going to need right. as we that word mental and i'm writing that down because that's a great thought that is a great way like as a gemini rising and if you have gemini placements like this has been a whole moment i will i know but i love what you just said there as another way to as you're having a moment <laughs> as you're in the midst of a moment yeah. to be like 
this is just helping me with my mental endurance. Yeah. Like, because I love you that. have the stamina with Mars there if you choose to use it. And Mars is fucking right the fuck up. I don't know about you, but people like, I mean, you're, you're heavy Gemini. Like, I mean, I'm sure you felt the shift I, mm -hmm. and like my Gemini placement, I, I felt it like it is the, there, the lack, the lack of tolerance, mm -hmm. the tolerance level is going down. Yep. Uh, the, the amplification like it's we're speaking what we want to be saying like we're right. not back because we've been holding back mars has been holding back this entire time in gemini as he's been retrograde and now he's like oh this is what this is what i'm supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and I, i'm not saying anything that i don't actually mean you might think i I'm being mean, but I mean what I say. <laughs> if that's the mean you're talking about, you're accurate. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I'm not angry about it. Nope. This is, and when we move through Aquarius season, you'll also notice cut and dry. It's black and white. There's yeah. there's a lack of emotional processing that's going to be occurring in this in these next thirty days. Yep. Intentional as as well because when you're dealing with the collective if you start getting everyone's emotions involved including your own you're actually gonna be like you like every all you're the, lost in the all sauce the, like you're that's yeah it through capricorn season and the heaviness things all of that i said what i said and i meant yeah. yep i said what i said and <laughs> my and, husband's catchphrase and through that i didn't even know that he came on i love you he's like pop <laughs> <laughs> see said what i said um, like we we say he says that at least two to three times a day <laughs> i love it but um but moving through that like what was the purpose of capricorn season if you can't see it in your power and like take the emotion out of it you actually right. get the emotion out of it because we also have uranus about to be going direct the day after the new moon and with that uranus is the natural ruler of aquarius so the rebel, the rebel i always want to say the rebellion but it is the rebellion as well yeah. the revolution that energy of quick sudden change awaken mean nerve awakener <laughs> and allowing for us to really have these mental thought processes that are going to be occurring and so that you can articulate them properly concisely and without the without the sugar coating like there's none in yeah. a prairie season there it's a very yeah. energy it's very black and white it's fixed air it's very matter of fact is noble a, a mercury uh, aquarius i don't know oh. hold please while oh. i check his shirt i would have <laughs> Oh, I've got, look, I've got all the things right here. You just got to give me a second to get there. He's like my mom, mom and so he's an Aquarius. <laughs> um, he is, he is a Mercury Aquarius, 29. Um, he is also a Mars Aquarius. There we go. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, but it. I don't know if anyone if anyone knows any Aquarius. There's no, and they're on their own time as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> their own fucking time. So like, it's a great time to if you have something going on at two p.m. It's at one thirty or one. Yeah, but if you really want them there on time, if you don't care, um. Yeah, because yeah. she's got that. I mean, she's very close to the to the energy. Yeah. And again, yeah. old Saturn is still ruling. So it's very, it's, you know, Capricorn's about the build, right? It's, it's the performance where Aquarius is more about the, like, the knowledge and the like i always talk about aquarius as the intellectual yep. gemini is a great communicator they can get a lot of thoughts and ideas they can research they can do that 
But when it comes to intellectuals, those are Aquarius. They are the intellectual. They, they are, these are the people like that catchphrase, married to my job, right? Because right? it's like, uh, this is my life's goal and my life's work or my purpose. And I, this is what, this is what brings me emotion. <clears throat> and I think it's also the lack of emotion is actually for them to keep us on task. Yes. It's collective on task of the bigger vision. It's like, great. Okay. Like, but what, are, what is the actual goal? Because yeah. that's where we're going and that's where we're headed. What do I need? It's, it's the, it's the leader without worry of who is following it is the just i'm i'm going this is where i'm going i will be here at whenever i get there but i'll meet you there yep and if you're there great if not i don't care yeah like moving regardless leading regardless of whether or not you are following or coming and so how can we step into that and where can you actually take okay I know who I am now. I know mm -hmm. the work that I want to be doing, Capricorn. I know how I want to show up. I know the the impact that I want to make. What's the path? What's the direction? How is that communicated? How do you need to innovate on that? And if no one is following you, who are you then? Mm -hmm. Does your path change if no one's following you? Like, that and this is where that where you really have to tap into the bigger purpose of who you actually are and remain in the Saturn despite being in the Uranus, mm -hmm. remain grounded in the foundations that you just established in the in the reinforcements of your values, despite how every like because because people other people are projecting but people. There might, there's going to be people, be people that don't want to be following the path. Yep. Then. Yep. Who, who are you then when, when they want to take their own? Are you going to get distracted and be like, oh, I need to go down that road too? Like, this is where you really have to hone back into the Saturn energy. Yeah. Here. I think I had a great quote written down. I know we're talking more about Aquarius season than the moon, but this was the quote that I had um, by... Isabel um, Hickey. So one of the books that I have, her quote was, and this is about Aquarius, the co-ruling of Uranus and Saturn. The quote is, freedom, which is Uranus, without responsibility, which is Saturn, is license and not liberty. Mm. That mm. just... But you said all of those things. I'm like, this is the quote that I wrote down for today. <laughs> this is it. I know. Um, do you have the moon up just to I do. round out the moon? Because we have to talk through Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn, and what Uranus is doing with his life. <laughs> okay. So here's the sun and the moon. You want to see where one degree, 32 minutes of Aquarius is for you. This is the Aquarius symbol. It's not, it, if it's in the eighth house, cool, but it may or may not be. This is the area of life where you're having a rebirth, where you're having new information come in, new downloads, etc. Here you can see Pluto, the, both of these energies having just come off of there and having their own rebirth of this process too that we've already discussed in length and I will do my best not to repeat myself. Um, they are trining, here's Mars over here at eight degrees direct of Gemini, um, 11th house. You're in the home house of Aquarius. That's fine. Yes. Crazy. That's great. You have, a, oh, you have a Aries first house then? That would make... You in Aries first house? You're in Aries rising? I'm double checking. <laughs> <laughs> Hold, please. Fucking We're stop. consulting our resources. <laughs> um, so we are about to have this uh, Venus-Saturn conjunction, which is happening on the 29th, if yep. I'm not mistaken. The 29th of January, finally finalizing uh, things uh, out. Nope, 22nd of January. Got you back. Yes, you're, you're right. Um, I'm wrong. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, hold, maybe not. Yeah. Um, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> um, so this is going to happen the day after this. So, so there's a little bit of a pause on whatever is going to manifest from the new moon after because there's going to be a possible shakeup where you're going to have a refinement the following day with venus conjunct saturn this is going to give you some deeper sense of what that responsibility is for you and the collective um also how that's going to look material in your physical world in your material world and in your financial world so something to be aware of and on that same day on the 22nd is when Uranus goes direct, which is over here in Taurus at almost 15 degrees, this blue guy. And that will then provide some clarity. But deeper than that is one, two, four, three, four days after, three days after. So that would be the 24th. Um, we will have this exact sextile from Jupiter yeah. to the sun. Um, a few hours after the new moon, the, the, moon. the moon will exact its sextile to Jupiter, which is the expander um, and the abundance, etc. Again, also bringing in new information, but also because important because of the fact that Jupiter just had his re rebirth moving back into Aries for the second, one, two, three, third, third time. One, two, second, third, second, third. But after his retrograde anyway he's back in aries for his finally and he's moving forward but he's gonna move through here pretty quickly right. and the sun is going to conjunct or have this exact sextile and this is going to then on the 21 to 4 that then you you will have that clearer path forward of what these messages are that you're getting on the new moon when the sun aligns with Jupiter and brings in the actual abundance and the new gateway of that airy spark of the new energy of the path, um, the pioneer. So the if we continue on, because how I kind of wrote it out in my head was going on with this theme of like, you're at the play, right? And the, the okay. curtain's about to rise. So the curtain is not going to rise on the new moon. Yeah. Yes, 20 Saturn, Saturn and, and Venus have to play a part in this play, right? They've got, they've got, they're like maybe if you want to, you know, analogize it there, they may be the actors that are getting into place behind the screen, right? And what they're there to do, or maybe not even the actors, I would probably more say a stage manager and their assistant. And what they're there to do is to assemble the details. Yeah. And like, okay, is everybody on their X? Is all the people in the right place? Do we have everybody out? Everybody be quiet. Like they're the ones that are kind of yeah. like yeah. getting all of these, these things in the background going. And then, you know, I will say I, I loved the financial piece of it. I think actually finances are going to come into a big play for a lot of people You've with this. Seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, not, not the, not all the, huge collective things that are going on. I mean, so crazy, right? Like the world economic forum is right now. Let's just talk like, let's just talk about the alignment of times. Like they don't know astrology, please stop yourself. Um, so it's like, this is, this is that time where the stage director and their assistant Venus and Saturn behind the stage of this new moon is like, we're not going to get another fucking shot until to like make sure everybody is ready to go until the matinee or not the matinee, the intermission. Okay. We, we're not going to talk. We won't be able to physically support, help, or talk to any of these actors that are getting on this stage. Any of your blessings that are going to get manifest, like that are going to come to manifestation and fruition they aren't going to be able to talk to them after curtains up. Yeah. So you have this window to go, is everybody where they need to be? Are all my finances?
finances where they need to be in order to make that next step, to take that investment jump, to do whatever it is you're looking to do. Um, and then Jupiter comes in and literally like fertilizes all your dreams. He comes in behind the stage, like he's that actor that's like the key, like the head of this play. I and he just like, he does the exact same thing that, um, oh, oh, who is the, it was Cat Williams. When he came on stage, he's like, go ahead and keep the party going, right? Like just, he's gonna take that water, turn it right into wine, boom. Go ahead and keep the party going, y'all. You're, uh, you're great, let's get this done. Yeah, and it's it's a mental process with this, with the Aquarius energy. There's a um, a big. You're going to I get I'm getting the sense of you're going to be able to see, understand, have clarity around why things were the way that they were when for the last thirty days or. And giving you this really deep, um, yeah, big, huge revelation, and you'll be able to see, like it's like the, it's just the clearing. Yeah. Jupiter clears it out and pioneers you straight forward and ahead. Yeah, and I, I think it is worth noting that Jupiter is moving very quickly through his Aries cycle. Yeah. So he, now this one I did have, he will only meet the sun twice Correct. in his Aries cycle during this cycle that he is in. So this is also, so you get two touch points, two touch points that are supportive because you've got the sextile, then you've got the conjunction. And it's these two supportive things where, again, speaking on clarity, it's like, all right, here's the blessing of the stage we got to go. And then you're going to come to the point when they meet up together where it's like, all right, everything that I showed you, is it working out? Yeah. How do we make it bigger? How do we continue to create? How do we make it so that way it goes longer term? Hey, yeah. how do you adjust that? Hey, this is going to be like our last time when we're in this kind of fiery energy to get shit started. So what are you doing with it? And it's a new thing. It's not mm -hmm. something done. It's new it's likely new people it's likely new individuals it's likely new new and i'm saying new because aries is the first sign of the zodiac yeah. and i'm saying collective because of the aquarius energy thought new thought coming in as well because of the aquarius energy like think differently mm -hmm. think bigger like go like you're gonna be near your thoughts be correct. willing to go where nobody's gone before correct yeah go higher go See the first thing, get curious. That yep. curiosity is going to keep, and, and Jupiter in itself, an Aquarius energy in themselves too, is very curious. Yes. It's different type of curiosity and shown differently. Aquarius will be that silent curiosity. Um, and observing and curiosity too. Exactly. Yeah, that very, like, I, I'm just staying curious. I'm... I, the eyes are saying everything, but speaking absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll also notice too, during Aquarius season, just in general, very, very, uh, being more, well, you will likely be more intentional with your words. Um, you'll get a sense of knowing and realizing the impact that your words have and how much weight they carry, mm -hmm. especially in how people are responding to you, which is why Aquarius is do just go because they're they're at this level intellectually where and it's not a better than it's not a high highbrow, whatever the fuck that's supposed to be said. But it's but kind of <laughs> like like are you on my level? Are you even here for me to be able to articulate in the way that I want to articulate because in the way that I want to articulate I'm at this level and I'm not going to dumb myself down here to speak, right. Right, to, I was about to say to speak to peasants but <laughs> oh, <laughs> very serious energy <laughs> <laughs> it's where Saturn's at <laughs> no it's 
it's really interesting like when you look at because and now like kind of transitioning into that Aquarius season we're not just in Aquarius season we're in Aquarius season in the age of Aquarius mm -hmm. and we are of the age of Aquarius that is like this this is very youthful. We're still like, we are still just like dipping our toe into what the age of Aquarius is going to be. And when you look at the astrology, and this is why looking ahead, um, doing things like the whole year ahead, um, even into the next couple of like the next decade, even in, well, let's say like this decade, yeah. the energy shifts so dramatically when Pluto gets into Aquarius, because now not only are we in the age of Aquarius, now Pluto's in Aquarius, we've got all of these energy shifts going on. It's like a layers of cake, right? There's layer on top of layer. And moving in, into the age of Aquarius is bringing in that like in, intuition and knowledge about things because your gut is also a brain. This is why people call it that. So there's a brain in your belly, in your gut. There's also a brain up here. And they have two different functions. Knowledge, intuition, right? This, it's taking these two and pushing forward from all that we learned in the age of Pisces, which was all around faith. Okay, I'm cool with faith. I'm cool with giving some faith and all everything, but it's got to make sense and it's got to feel right. Yeah. yeah. And that's what everything is all about right now. And then when you look at Pluto coming into Aquarius, I personally think the technology revolution is going to go in a whole, like we are never going to be the same after this decade is done. Oh, for sure. Like we're just, we're just not. We, we are going to look back and go, shit, we really did do that, didn't we? <laughs> like, wait, it's going to be the Blockbuster moment. Oh, shit, I did really, really used to rent movies from Blockbuster, yeah. didn't I? <clears throat> like, that's yeah. where we're going to be at. And it's, it's coming into this, like, it's that pioneering energy. And that's what you have the ability in yourself with your purpose to really push forward is... The things that people used to say were crazy are no longer crazy. You you can see that over and throughout history. I am sure they talked about like um, 20,000 leagues under the sea and they were like, you're effing crazy. There is no way a ship is going to be under the ocean and people can live on it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the fuck they can't. Mm -hmm. Hold my beer. Mm -hmm. I'll Let's do yeah. this, right? Yeah. Like anything can, is possible. Anything yeah. is possible if you put aside your fear yeah. to create, if you put aside your fear of being judged, your fear of not being accepted. And that's that gift of Aquarius is to your point that you said earlier, it's standing in it. How are you going? Are you going to give up on your dreams because everybody else thinks your dreams aren't real? They're not their dreams. It wasn't their message. It yeah. was your message. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently Mars is really coming out right now, y'all. We love it. <laughs> we love it. That's and and there's also something you said, and it's never going to be the same. And we we don't know what that same is going to look like. Yes. It could be quote unquote advancements, but our advancements actually advance if they're taking us away from our true innate power. If they're taking us away from our per, our abilities, are we? Yes, we have this like this ability right, right now because of this phone and this technology. But like, are we as individuals better because of it? And mm -hmm. it's very interesting to see how Pluto changes things up in Aquarius. It's exactly. like what exactly is because it is it is technology system it is the artificial intelligence. It is. Like I'm getting the message and this is what I am manifesting is like, is free energy is, a, is tapping into what actually is available to us. 
without the need for the systems that the matrix has put in place. Yep. Seeing how that unfolds is going to be very, um, it's going to be great. It is going to be great. No, it, and that's the kind of the piece of it is, you know, the, there is a liberation, obviously like that, that's one of Aquarius's key things. And it's one of Uranus's key things is liberation. And we kind of touched on it a little bit before, but it's worth repeating. The gift of Aquarius and the gift of this age of Aquarius is understanding that your liberation comes from within. Yeah. It's finding that process to liberate yourself. And within liberating yourself, you show others that it is possible. And that is the connective tissue of Aquarius with the collective is Asha. your liberation fuels others liberation. Yes. Yeah. And it always comes back to self. It always comes back to self. It does. It does. Do we have a savior? I do. And I am so excited. Look at what I got. So. I mean, while we're talking all about, you know, technology increases and everything, I am, I am over here just fucking collecting books. Look, I did find out that random, <laughs> random knowledge from the Gemini rising. Um, if you have a thousand books, you can actually be classified as a library. You're welcome. Okay. I'm not there. I'm, I, we're on the way. Uh, we, you could have been. Very fucking. You're I had a perfect. lot of books. He's a um, and then they just I, I got rid of all my books. So we I mean it's look. Cool, but fuck, she's a bird. All right. <laughs> Sabian symbol. Um, this is Dr. Mark Edmonds Jones book. Okay. Um Aquarius two, because yep. it's one degree to two degree. So Aquarius two. And on it's an unexpected thunderstorm. This is a symbol of nature's potentials as they lie beyond any individual control. Talk about, we just talked about control. Who, who has the curtain? You don't, you don't. Um, as well as all of the tendency of all things to come to some dramatic head in either physical or psychological terms. The primitive symbolism emphasizes the necessity that every living spirit remain wholly self-quickened within itself and be alert to its more or less inevitable participation in every shifting pattern of events. The convergence of relations in some climax of experience is man's real opportunity for self-fulfillment. The key word is accident. When positive, the degree is created a creative opportunism and a genius for shaping all eventualities to some desired end. And when negative, complete temperamental instability. Mm -hmm. wow. Power void. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, Sabian. Mm -hmm. We love, oh, whoa. Okay, shaking it up. We love them. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Any questions? Anyone? Any, any, anything? If not, <sighs> go enjoy. Oh. We'll give a moment. We'll give a moment. Why don't you, um, why don't you talk about what you got going on? I'll talk about what I got going on. We'll leave I, some time for people to put in questions. Of uh, the Aust Australia, Aust <laughs> astrology mini mine is next week. I'm not going to lie guys. I might be pushing it for one more week because the nodes are a whole fucking thing and the eclipses are a whole thing. So, um, well, I'm going to see how long it's going to be. So we might have one extra session together. You're welcome. And today is the last day to get into our intro to astrology course for only $33. It's fucking amazing. After that, we're moving it to 55. And then after that, it's officially going to land at 77. Um, and on March 11th, the I haven't even announced it. You're hearing it here first. Mm -hmm. uh, one train. Yeah, you're like, you don't even know either. I, I don't even know. No. Reiki, Reiki one certification online. 
um we're doing only reiki one and then we'll do reiki two the following month i'm splitting them up i'm really honing in on this energy of integration i think it's just so fucking necessary you and don't ever please understand that you do not need to be have the intention to practice reiki on people to go through reiki one and reiki two certification and reiki one is literally only self-treatment anyway and just because it's virtual does not mean that you won't get the attunement my reiki master is in canada and we i'm great fully attuned <laughs> fully attuned um anything else daily about... dose we got a, we got a daily dose yes! okay so you guys if Castle. you love if you we know you love these if you want more join like the daily. like daily we will i mean granted it's not going to be live like this but it's going to be this interaction all the time in your back pocket like <laughs> and it's officially here what is this going to do now the sun is conjunct pluto you might be feeling like this and not even just on the day of hey guys in a few days this is going to be happening yeah. so you can air um we'll open up the chat once in a while so you guys can ask questions and like you know get any insight that you would need but we're so excited about it we are so fucking excited about it and um, by the way talking about all we talked about about new idea this is a brand new thing i have not ever heard another like there are people that use communities like this but from an astrology yeah. standpoint um again it's not unknown for people to have access to astrologers and stuff like that. But it's, this is what liberation is. This is what pioneering energy is. It's, this is new for both of us. Yeah. This is new for, you know, again, I haven't experienced this with anybody else that I've worked on with, or worked with within astrology. So yeah. pioneer, let's figure it out. Yeah, and if you need, need a, um, if you need the payment split into two, just DM and we'll, we can split it into two. Um, okay. But, but yeah, the payment link is for painful. So. Yep. And tell us what you're doing. Tell us what you're doing. She's back. I got all of these. You guys can't see them. Maybe you can. No, you can't see them. I got like windowsills full of tarot cards right now that are just sitting there staring at me in the face. Um, we are back. Yo. And we are doing a 2023. What? How long has hiatus been? We decided, we started the process of moving in May, Yo. April, May of last year. Um, so like that kind of process of, you know, purging everything in, in Hawaii, closing all of that down and then moving out here and just having having to take moments look on honoring the pieces and the the process and we are back i will be doing a live 2023 tarot reading so if you've never seen one of mine you can go on youtube the the past ones are all up there in my videos mm -hmm. um but as i combine astrology and tarot when i read so um how i think I'm going to set this up is I do my astrology for the year in a quarterly thought process. That's just the easiest way. My Gemini self and Virgo self compartmentalizes all the things. Um, and I think I'm going to do see kind of what the cards pull out for each quarter and then go from there. And then on the 7th of February, um, I, I, oh, sorry. The 2023 reading is Saturday. I know it's the moon, so perfect time. Um, it is Saturday, 2 p.m. Central Time, live on Twitch or YouTube, if you have either one. And then Twitchy Tuesdays are coming February 7th, where I will be live on Twitch and YouTube as well. I'm going to try this whole multi-stream. I don't know how it's going to look on Instagram, but I do have the ability to do live Instagram as well. So we're going to play around with that. Um, and we're just going to grow and develop starting things new, doing things new. I've never been on Twitch. We're going to see. I, I'm, I'm being called, so I am following.
I love it. And I mean, it's like right on time. It's right, it's on, right time. on time. Always. Um, we did announce last week that, or last two days ago, <laughs> felt feels like, um, uh, um, that these were going to be housed on Red Pill. Please. However, um, we lied. <laughs> <laughs> we no, we didn't lie. We tried, yeah. and Mercury and Mars said no. Yeah. So apparently, I thought you could upload videos that were longer. Um, but anyway, for the time being, these will still be housed on our um, on our pages, and maybe the snippet will be up on um, Red Pill, and then the whole thing on YouTube as well. So amazing. Yay! Love you guys. Bye. Thanks for joining. See everybody yes. later.